really pleased to have Michelle Daigle with us today um, from Up Quebec Way. So Michelle has uh, a very storied career, I guess, in, in the feeding sector in Quebec, uh, involved with the UPA, which would be the Federation of Agriculture in Quebec for 41 years and was the administrator of the Fed Cattle Marketing Committee for more than 25 years and 12 years as president. So, uh, Michelle, I'm sure you've seen a lot of changes in the feedlot sector over those 25 years. Um, also 12 years in the National Cattle Feeders Association representing Quebec and was president in 2019 and 2020. So Michelle and, and, and his family uh, run a, a feed yard and um, uh, grain terminal and cash crop operation uh, near St. Helene de, de Bagot uh, in Quebec. Um, they run, they got a one-time feedlot capacity of 2,500 head and, and market 3,500 to 4,000 head a year. Uh, a couple of items of note uh, that are important because they are priorities for us here in the Maritimes as well. Um, Michelle and, and, and his farm team are one of the first VBP plus certified feed yards in Quebec. And um, they are part of the sustainability pilot through the Canadian Roundtable for Sustainable Beef, uh, working through Cargill, Guelph uh, to, to trace those products through their sustainable beef initiative. So Michelle, welcome to our session today. We're very glad to have you. We look forward to hearing more about your operation. Thank you, Mr. McLeod. Uh, <clears throat> they asked me to have presentation in French speaking, so I will proceed that way. Uh, and Mr. Uh, we have a translator. <clears throat> As Mr. McLeod said, uh, I, I was an administrator at the uh, UPA uh, and uh, Bowman Producers coming for 41 years. Uh, so before I was an administrator and at the National Association of the Cattle Feeder Association for 12 years. Uh, 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 I continued uh, second year as uh, past president. Uh, so uh, we work as he said, uh, on two uh, entities at the farm, we do some cash crop, uh, mainly uh, 1,300 hectares uh, in culture, mostly corn, soya, and fall, uh, winter uh, uh, grains and hay. So we are uh, self-sufficient in forages. Uh, and the rest of the grain is sold uh, through our center. We can store uh, about 8,000 tons of uh, grain on our farm. We sell about 50% uh, of our production on the market. And so since 2008, uh, the farm is exploited as a, a, a a company with my my two sons, Benoit and Mathieu, and uh, we hire five full-time employees and uh, we support therefore eight families. Uh, we started in uh, uh, finishing in, in uh, 20, uh, initially it was a dairy farm from 79 up to 86. So we were uh, milking about 60 cows uh, on a daily basis. And then we switched to uh, finishing uh, steers uh, since 79 and gradually cut out the milk uh, and to focus only on finishing uh, steers. So with the 2,500 uh, places we have, fattening spots on two sites, uh, we go half and a half males and females. And so it depends on the whether we purchase females or not. Uh, some, yeah. 
so we need to have the equivalency. And also another part, my uh, my elder son has a uh, hundred uh, cows that they also exploit with his uh, wife and uh, children. Next slide. So the ration, uh, total mix ration is the TMR. Uh, they're composed mainly of silage corn, wet corn, dry corn, ethanol grain, uh, uh, corn gluten, uh, and also hay silage or dry hay for the first 28 uh, days. The, the uh, level of energy is right uh, between uh, 125 uh, gain, uh, uh, between 125 and 130 and finishing. So the daily average gain rate is 1.75 kilos per head per day. The conversion rates uh, between uh, 6 and 6.5, depending on the climate. Uh, so the breeds we finish, there's of course Angus, but also British and exotic uh, crosses, uh, Charolais, Simmental, and so on, uh, some Angus, Hereford, or other uh, British uh, breeds. So the sales weight uh, basically we look for is uh, 1,450 pounds, and we get this with the exotic breeds. And for males, uh, one, uh, 1,650 pounds, uh, uh, to go to market, the source of the animals that come to us are about uh, 2021, 35% came from West, uh, mostly Manitoba and Saskatchewan, 62% from Quebec, and also, and, and those in Quebec uh, uh, through the auctions here, about 33% came from the Maritimes from your end. So, so, so far, so good. He was asking uh, uh, if that translation was going okay. So to do an overview of the Quebec cattle production. So in a few words, about 13 some thousand bovine producers, uh, over uh, nine, over 9,000 uh, businesses uh, were the fourth largest animal production in, in Quebec after dairy, pork, and poultry production. The representation of Quebec uh, production in Canada, uh, that would represent 6% of Canadian beef uh, produced here, 3% for Canadian steer, it's decreasing, 18% of the Canadian cull cattle for veal uh, is different, 75% uh, of Canadian veal comes from Quebec. Next slide. The degree of theoretical self-sufficiency. Uh, uh, so the to total Quebec production divided by the total Quebec consumption is about 30% of uh, uh, kept for uh, the uh, needs here in terms of veal meat, 100% of Quebec's needs also exporting elsewhere to Canada and the US. So what now about the uh, Quebec producers uh, beforehand called the Federation? So there are two laws uh, that uh, guide us. Uh, the first one in 74 at UPA, which is the law on professional uh, uh, producers. And the mission is to defend and develop the socioeconomic interest in, interests and uh, for producers in Quebec. The other part is the uh, the law for uh, ag agriculture and fisheries products uh, that was set up in '82. So that's a, a, a marketing board, uh, and its mission is to make it more uh, streamlined, more efficient. So the structure uh, from bovine product, uh, production, um, 
a quick uh, review. So you have uh, the producers, there are 14 regional uh, unions. Uh, they have a general assembly. They have a board of directors. Uh, it's made up of uh, chairs of 14 uh, regional uh, unions uh, and composed of five marketing committees. Uh, so feeder calves, slaughter steers, green fed calves, milk fed calves, and coal cattle and dairy calves. Uh, uh, so with the board, there's also an executive committee and a general secretariat with employees, of course, and their responsibilities are marketing and sales agencies, accounting and payment guarantee, agri-economic analysis, uh, quality assurance, research, environment, communication and information. So now in more detail in terms of the joint plan. So uh, it, we have the organized marketing. We have a uh, joint uh, uh, producers in Quebec. Uh, so it's to make it more orderly, more efficient, and in consultation with the joint plan. So in terms of the marketing, it's done through five productions. So with those uh, five sectors, we have the feeder calf and backgrounder, the uh, slaughter steers, the uh, coal and dairy calves, uh, grain fed and dairy. Uh, calves, uh, that's all the animals uh, produced in Quebec and in that's uh, uh, put together in that organized marketing. So who are the targeted producers? Any person who breeds the target product uh, on his own behalf or on behalf of others and who causes the targeted product to be produced in any way and offers the targeted product for sale. Five marketing committees and five negotiating committees, they have the power to intervene, whether it's the joint plan, marketing regulations, and agreements. Some sectors have developed uh, a promotion and advertising fund uh, since 83, a payment guarantee fund since a uh, four of the five sectors, uh, except for the dairy calf uh, since 89, were guaranteed to be paid. There's a research and development fund uh, set up in 94 and a marketing development fund uh, for um, since 2004. So what are the activities supported by the joint plan and implemented by PDQ? There are records in terms of environment, animal health, quality assurance, and animal welfare. There's also uh, income support. There's the FISI uh, Agri -anal Analysis and Studies, uh, the different committees, uh, cost of production committees for uh, the sectors and also hay insurance. We also uh, involve in terms of the veterinary council, traceability and international agreements. So with the Canadian cases, we're a member of the Canadian Cattlemen Association Canadian Roundtable for Sustainable Beef, Sustainable Beef, Canadian Beef Grading Agency, Canadian Cattle Identification Agency, National Committee of the Verified Beef Production Plus Program, and, and uh, Beef Canada, Canada Beef, and uh, there will be more. Uh, in terms of communication and community life and lobbying, we, the uh, PBQ has a website, they're represent on Facebook. They have the gallery of the president of La Terre de Chez Nous, uh, that's uh, weekly, and also the monthly, a uh, few times a year for Bovin du Québec or 
Quebec uh, bovine, where we do an overview of the actuality of current uh, happenings in the sector. So, of course, every five years, uh, they, uh, they have a five-year plan. So that's uh, part of the Régie des marchés agricoles, agricoles and Matets Quebec. So we have to see what happened over the last five years to present the action plan for the next five years. This is done on a regular basis. Uh, so we work, uh, as I mentioned, 14 uh, uh, regional uh, unions, and there's also a national contribution agreement, the national checkoff. Uh, so we do this through our structure. We use a good part of that checkoff for the activities, uh, usual, uh, usual activities. Uh, so those activities in terms of administration, uh, uh, the usual administrative activities, so financial, financial statements uh, to have the auditors have an annual meeting, an annual report, uh, board of directors and executive committee. This has to work. Uh, and also we collect the contributions and uh, update the producers list. So, now, an overview of the slaughter steer production. So, the production of slaughter steers in Quebec, it's uh, really in decline. When I started in that sector, we produced uh, 214,000 uh, steers per year. And as you can see, we've gradually decreased and sometimes quickly reduced the volume. So now we, uh, for two years, around 75,000 uh, steers marketed per year. And what explains this is, is the decrease in profitability of this sector. You, we can't uh, go too much on this, but when the price went up for the consumer, there's never been as little return to the farm uh, for the producers uh, at different levels. When I started in finishing, it was over 50%, maybe 60 of the retail price that came back to the uh, uh, producers. And now it's 37%. So you can understand that's one of the main causes, even with the uh, revenue security, uh, there's that decrease uh, still happened in terms of steer production in Quebec. So what is the number and size of slaughter steer operations in 2020? You see the different uh, uh, figures here, tables. We have the number of producers on the left and the number of uh, steers uh, on the right. So small producers between 25 and 500, uh, those producers, uh, 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 have sold about 10,000 per year and so on and so forth. And when you get to bigger farms, uh, you talk about over a thousand heads or more, uh, it's lower than uh, these are important volumes uh, for farms like mine uh, of 2,500 per year. We produce about 20,000 heads uh, of those uh, 75,000. So it gives you an idea of the structure for, we are not that many, but it's really the efficiency that allowed us to be still involved. But sadly, there are a lot of producers left uh, production over the last 15 years. So what are the marketing channels? Uh, there are three uh, main channels. Uh, we have the electronic uh, system, uh, five, uh, six uh, sales per year, uh, per week. Uh, that's the computer auction. And that's a price reference. The most of the sales are done in direct sales, uh, either through contract. Uh, the main buyer in Quebec is uh, Cargill at Guelph. Uh, also some more uh, slaughtering being done in Quebec. And we're uh, 
we're fairly uh, we uh, supply also the PEI uh, slaughter uh, so about nine percent of the production in terms of uh, contract sales there's a third part uh, smaller producers uh, is the public auction all of this is sold to slaughterhouses and they spread it out to different markets whether it's our hri the retail market processing or exporting their doors of the bigger players so in the slaughter steer sector for 2022 the marketing priorities and the priority actions uh, so consultation with producers and industry partners on the sector recovery recovery plan we uh, continue a deployment of the vbp plus program we also continue the involvement in the strategic planning of the beef sector and how we can uh, uh, better return for everybody uh, so that we can interested in growing more. Uh, also approval and enforcement of the amended uh, reglement sur la mise en marché des bouvillons du Québec, that's the slaughter steer uh, markets in Quebec. Uh, this was being uh, adjusted, updated. So, We'll continue to work on improving the income security program. Obviously that tool well, did not do its work uh, uh, perfectly, which explains the decrease we are seeing. We'll continue to explore various forms of collective marketing and offer pooling to get a better price. Uh, Also to consider the role and future of electronic auctions. Sometimes there's not much offer. So it's a reference price, uh, but there has to be enough offer to uh, represent accurately. Up to now it's worked, but for the future, we're wondering. Uh, also a presentation to producers and analysis of the competitiveness uh, diagnosis, diagnosis study. So to end uh, uh, the CRSB and VBP plus sustainable beef program. So that's the quality program that was chosen uh, by the PBQ to finish from, so, so to uh, fattening from birth to slaughter. And that program uh, has requirements in terms of uh, on-farm food safety, the animal care, the hay, also important in terms of biosecurity. There are also the aspect of environmental stewardship. So uh, in terms of permits and how we manage the environment. Uh, and of course, VB plus certification uh, entitles you to the sustainable beef value chain. In total right now, uh, in terms of farms certified to date, uh, there's a total of 140 farms that are VBP plus certified by production sectors, 33 in slaughter steer, feeder calf 74, So only feeder calf, uh, for feeder calf and slaughter steers, we have 11. For feeder calf and backgrounders, we have 35. And feeder calf, backgrounders and slaughter steer, we have uh, six. The estimated number of certified cattle uh, is certified right now is 36,916 for cows over 15,000, 12% of the herd that's certified uh, that way up to now. So the objective, of course, uh, it's a dream uh, uh, to, to improve production. So right now there's a, a bonus 
for those who are marketed through Cargill. So in 2021, um, there were 25 uh, number of heads qualified as sustainable uh, and the recognition at the second uh, uh, quarter um, uh, 30 for 1823, the fourth uh, were up to uh, uh, third quarter 170, 179 and fourth quarter 603. So gradually, as producers will uh, participate, there'll be more uh, bovine that are uh, admissible for the time. The problem we have is that these only uh, those uh, born and raised in Quebec, and that's uh, so the bonus is, is uh, paid uh, basically by McDonald, and the $20 is paid to the uh, producer and the semi finishing and to the finisher. So we work hard so that uh, the identification, uh, both Canadian and Quebec, uh, that they get together to solve all the political uh, so that all the bo Canadian bovine would be admissible to the program. We also work hard to make sure that uh, other uh, buyers, uh, whether in Quebec and the Maritimes, uh, can contribute to that uh, uh, bonus, that uh, premium, if you will. So that ends uh, my uh, presentation for this morning. I, I would, I, I can still, I can answer the questions in English as well. I'll be happy to answer your questions. In terms of funding, we're uh, kind of lucky. Uh, mainly the bank uh, is uh, financing us. Uh, we had uh, some very hard years. Remember interest rates in the early 80s for those who were there, 23, 24% at that time. So we had difficult years, uh, but the bankers uh, continued to trust us. There is also a federal organization that is very open to funding farms. Uh, and the margins, uh, the uh, Ag uh, Canada, the FCC. And that program is an important source of funding, of course, in Western Canada. There's a lot of uh, retired uh, 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 growers, producers that fund uh, uh, this. The, the, if there's a formula that uh, is done partly in Quebec, some of them work with that uh, but i would say that uh, before funding you need the passion in order to do this uh, what kind of uh, ration do you give to your above 900 pounds uh, do you take them up to uh, uh, 1400 50, 1600 pounds as i mentioned before we try to do a uh, a growth ration, uh, 125 uh, energy gain, mostly corn silage, uh, uh, wet grains, uh, also very popular since 81. We, we uh, the high mustard here, corn, and that's uh, really uh, something that works really well. And in growth and finishing, we focus more, more uh, wet uh, corn, and some dry corn to make sure that it's uh, digested uh, differently. We also other products, um, uh, ethanol, uh, 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 55 in, uh, humidity, and some also uh, products like uh, uh, fall uh, corn uh, and for finishing a lot of uh, hay, and throughout the finishing, uh, some uh, hay silage. So as we see, the closer to finishing, the more we focus the energy. Uh, and those are more expensive rations. Uh, and this year, we focused on silage corn. Right now, we sell it at 400 some dollars a ton uh, sent to the, the, the port. So, 
so up to 350, 360, it worked, but now it's more difficult. However, since January, we have a price, market prices that uh, are able to uh, pay for what it cost to, to uh, uh, grow them. We couldn't uh, increase the price paid for veals. Uh, the price uh, remained fairly stable. The finishing costs uh, uh, have really exploded, and that's the sector that suffers the most at this point. Uh, so the final weight uh, when you send them to the slaughterhouse is about what the average weight in males uh, with exotic uh, breeds. It's between uh, 1650 and 1800 pounds. Uh, our buyer is able to get those weights uh, and with the margin are tight, uh, the last uh, 100, 200 pounds, uh, even if it costs more, it's worth it. For females, we try to focus to 1,500 pounds, uh, about uh, 1,450 pounds, but you need mostly exotic uh, Charolais, Simmental, Limousin. If too much uh, Britannic, uh, it would be below that. So that's what the market is looking for, about 1,500 pounds. It's not necessarily what's uh, uh, paying for us. Uh, thank you. Hey, again. Oh, we do have a question in the chat here, Michelle. How many days on average would you have your cattle on your final finishing ration? Oh, almost uh, 125 to uh, 150, 160 days on, on feed, on the heavy feed. For uh, in cattle is uh, at 78, 50, uh, 70, 50, pound to 850 pounds. Uh, that's why we finish cattle uh, that heavy. So Michelle, a couple questions. Um, first one, pretty simple. Where do you uh, source your wet distillers grains from? Oh, it's from uh, Montreal area. You know, we have a plant in Quebec that produce uh, ethanol plant and we buy uh, uh, one one uh, four axle load every week here, and you know it's really expensive at the time. It's based on the uh, cash uh, cash con price, so uh, it's expensive, but it's working very well. It's come uh, about uh, half an hour from my uh, farm. <clears throat> Otherwise, you could have access to uh, DDGs, uh, dry distiller grains. You, you, you can uh, import uh, that uh, by train when they run and uh, is the way it is. Uh, most of Western cattle feeder now are feeding DGGs and they, uh, they have a really bad, uh, uh, bad harvest last fall. So they uh, receive uh, most of the feeding for fed cattle out west in Alberta and Saskatchewan from uh, US Corn Bell and they have big concern with the uh, strike uh, on CP rail. Hopefully it, it, it's uh, down now, but uh, you know, they, they were really upset on this. Mm -hmm. So the second question is uh, the changes in, in the vaccination requirements or recommendations, I guess, within, within Quebec, um, you know, requiring the fetal protection uh, in the cow herd. How is that going to change the way that you source calves? Oh, it's really um, full for uh, cattle feeder. You know, when cattle die, it's not good for cattle feeder and it's not good for uh, for cow calf producer. When cattle is died, it's a loss for everyone. So if we have uh, those type of program that will keep cattle healthier, it's good for the business, it's good for everybody. If we reduce the uh, death losses at the farm uh, with uh, those kind of vaccination, we have death losses under 2% of the farm, between one or 2%. Uh, before that, before that system, vaccination system, 
vaccination system, we have death loss from two to four percent. And you know, it's really helpful that way. Uh, we need uh, more uh, vaccination, or la uh, like uh, hemophilus vaccine. Now it, it's not mandatory, but it will be helpful. Uh, last month we have an outbreak hemophilus, and you know. On 160 cattle, we lose 5% on that, 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 that numbers. Uh, it's really upset for me, but you know, uh, we were looking together to have those kind of vaccine to protect cattle. I don't know if it's, it's answer your question very well, but the way it is. Well, and it, it's a complex, issue that that needs to be dealt with across the industry so new brunswick is primarily a cow calf uh, well the maritimes are, are primarily cow calf operators advice to the cow calf sector on 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 how to get this job done and what we're going to see maybe from the quebec feed yard industry and um and and how the requirements will change over over say the next five years Oh, I think, uh, you know, you have the, some some cows that are sold in Quebec through Réseau en Can Quebec. And when they have some, I buy some cattle from your uh, your uh, province. And, you know, you, it's required that those cattle are uh, well uh, vaccinated to be available for uh, that program. But, you know, I think... Uh, if we have to feed uh, feed and finish more cattle in the future, it's uh, maybe one tool that will be really useful for the future. Excellent. Thank you for that. Pardon my English speaking. I hope you can understand what I try to say. <laughs> Well, if there's no other questions, I guess, uh, maybe uh, over to our chair, Trevor Welch, for a few closing comments. I hope my presentation will uh, as to be helpful for you. The, the only thing we could ask for outside of this presentation today is an open invitation to come and visit you and see what you're doing at your farm. Every time you cross the Highway 20, I'm really close from the Highway 20 between uh, Drummondville and St. Tyson. I'm two kilometers south of the Highway 20 at exit 150. You are welcome every time to, uh, to visit uh, my farm. Just, uh, just uh, send a call on my phone and I will be happy to uh, receive you at the farm. Well, if you are a group, it's better too. Uh, well, there you go. We we do have some government folks on on the line with us today, and and so maybe it's uh, now that restrictions are are easing on transport, then we need to put together a little group and and go on up and visit, and uh, maybe we could lean on Andre Wa to maybe put together a bit of a tour for us from a couple different operations like like yours. Yeah, and uh, I, I can uh, conduct a visit in French or English speaking if you require. Excellent. Thanks. Um, yeah, no, so uh, put me on the spot there for a second. I was just finishing my lunch while I was watching here, so it gives me a chance to, to have a sandwich while, while listening. <laughs> Luckily, my screen was shut off. Um, anyway, look, uh, thanks very much, Michelle, uh, for that presentation and, and uh, you know, the questions at the end. Uh, I guess a, a sign of a good presentation is not a lot of questions. Uh, but uh, yes, interesting information and, uh, you know, good to see that uh, one of the things, as Cedric mentioned, we've been talking about quite a bit lately is, you know, the vaccination of calves. And of course, a lot of the calves, yeah, from New Brunswick head to, uh, head to Quebec. So we want to make sure that we get, uh, you know, get all of our cow-calf producers on board with that. So it keeps that market open. And, and I've been talking with some of the guys, you know, who are feeding cattle here in the province too, and, and they're... Uh, you know, seeing a difference uh, by bringing in, of course, you know, say one one animal death loss is is a big hit to the pocketbook. So uh, if you're getting up three, four, five percent, uh, like you were saying there on some, that's uh, yeah, that's a real that's a real kick in the rear end. 
Um, so, you know, vaccinations are fairly cheap and, and we want to make sure that the producers, uh, producers get on board with that. And, uh, and of course there's, you know, there's still funding available like for, uh, handling systems and stuff. A lot of guys maybe aren't, aren't up to date with their handling systems and, and vaccinations might be a bit of a challenge sometimes. So it's, uh, it's good to see that, um, that that funding I think is still available for a little bit longer. So take advantage if you can. Um, and again, thank you for taking time out of your day, Michelle, to, uh, to bring that information to us. Uh, and I think a tour would be really nice if uh, we're all like a bunch of cattle standing at the gate and now they threw the gates open. So now we can go for a run. We've all been penned up here for two years. So uh, it's really good. Uh, and if you're right off the 20, uh, a lot of times, yeah, if we're heading, heading through Quebec onto Ontario or somewhere, we're going right by you. So that'd be a good opportunity to, uh, to come up and see your operation. Um, and I appreciate Thank everybody you. taking, sorry, go ahead. Thank you and you're, you're welcome. Yeah, no, thanks. Uh, and I appreciate everybody here taking time out of their lunch break. Uh, you know, maybe somewhere on the road, somewhere in the office or at the house, uh, taking a break to uh, to listen. And this is the, I believe this is our sixth um, lunch webinar that we've had. And uh, I'm glad to see that they've been well attended. Uh, and hopefully uh, since they've been recorded, maybe if there's other people too at a later date and want to look, listen in, that'd be great. Um, I don't believe we have any more, I guess maybe there is going to be one maybe in April, isn't there one more, uh, we haven't scheduled a time for that, but we'll be, you know, everybody that's on our producer list and, and uh, through MB Cattle, we'll be getting a notification of that. So again, uh, thanks, Michelle. Thank you everybody for attending. Uh, and uh, Thank you, Ron Fournier, for uh, translating for us. So you're doing a fantastic job. And uh, all of us uh, English-speaking people appreciate it. <laughs> so we, 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 we aren't all bilingual. I've talked to some my friends of mine in the West, and they say, oh, you're from New Brunswick. You must be bilingual. And I said, well, I, I probably should be, but I'm, but I'm not to that point yet. Uh, anyway, thank you again. Uh, that's the end of my comments, I guess. Cedric, do you have anything else you want to add before we close down? No, nope. it's been great. We'll see you soon. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. I know. <laughs>